When I was a kid, I took violin lessons. And one of the things that I stipulated when I started taking the lessons was that I didn't want to do shows and recitals and stuff like that because I had taken piano lessons earlier with some people and they always put these big recitals on and they were really nerve wracking and I hated it. So I started taking the violin lessons, which by the way, fiddle lessons, because I grew up in Texas. And I got a little better at it. And next thing you know, I start doing these little shows and performances everywhere at old folks' homes and little pageants and stuff like that. It's, next thing you know, I'm just, I'm playing all over the place. This was not what I had in mind. So my grandmother comes to me and she lives in a very, very tiny Texas town. There are 300 people living there. I'm not exaggerating that. It's, there's a population of 300 in this town. And they were putting on a chili festival, a chili cook-off. And she asked if I would want to participate in a, in a fiddle competition that they were having. So she asked me, everybody thought it'd be a good idea. My mom wanted me to do it. And I thought, well, it's, it's a little thing. And I was already doing these little shows all over the place. I'm sure this is nothing. Sure, fine. So the day of the chili cook-off comes around, we go out there and I have never seen, nor has anybody who has ever lived in that town ever seen so many people in that town ever. Unbeknownst to me, this was like a national thing. This was like a national chili cook-off. Why it was in this town of all places, I still to this day, I have no idea. But there was like a legit stage, like, a, like an event stage with thousands of people walking around and listening to country bands up there playing and stuff. And that's where I'm supposed to go up and play Cotton Eye Joe, which is supposed to be cute because it'd be like Cotton Eye Me. <laughs> oh yeah, there's one little thing. I barely knew how to play it. I really hadn't taken this thing very seriously. I was just kind of doing it to make my grandma happy and I wasn't expecting there to be anybody there. It was just a thing I was gonna go through, whatever. And now I'm looking out at a crowd that is like 10 times more than all the people I have ever played for all together in one spot. As my turn was coming up, I'm standing on the side of the stage and I've got this ridiculous outfit on with boots and stuff like that. And I'm holding my violin and the guy that's up there in front of me, he's playing like Orange Blossom Special, which is like the hardest fiddle tune in the world. And I'm just standing there and I freak out. The violin literally just slips out of my hands onto the ground. I start shuffling backwards. And next thing you know, I am, I am running full speed as fast as I can across this town. My dad's chasing after me. We're knocking over ladies with stew pots. And it's just, I ran to the car and I just, I literally just collapsed on the ground. Not my finest moment. If I could go back in time, I would change that. Mads Rune Hockstead asked, Brian Greene recently said that we can't alter the flow of time, but we can bend it. Can you do a video about time travel? I'm gonna start this one off with a quote. Time is a kind of river, an irresistible flood sweeping up men and events and carrying them headlong one after the other to the great sea of being. Time travel is one of our favorite things to consider and talk about. It's a great sci-fi trope. We really love the idea of being able to go back and change things from our past or from the past previous to our lives. We love the idea of traveling forward and seeing the wonders of the future. And to get pedantically literal about it, we are all time travelers. We're all traveling forward in time one second per second. We are all just flowing along this river of time. And that river only flows one direction. Now we can go faster down the river through relativistic physics. So time travel into the future is absolutely possible. If you get into a ship and travel at near the speed of light and then turn around and come back, you will have not aged while the rest of the world has moved forward. You have literally traveled into the future. We can also experience that same time dilation by getting near a black hole. Now that is still technically out of our reach because we don't have the ability to travel that fast and we can't get anywhere near a black hole right now, but technically, yes, we can do that. Time travel into the past though, now that's a bugaboo. But there are some scientists that have talked about the possibility of being able to travel backwards through time by using wormholes. And we've all seen the whole wormhole analogy where you have something like this where, you know, you got a galaxy and you have a point in space over here and a point in space over here and they're probably millions of light years apart and traveling there linearly would take a long time. However, you can bend space like this and punch a hole through that space and get to the other side of the galaxy. I need a sharper pen. That's how they explain wormholes in Interstellar, like they're already on the ship and then he's like, I'm gonna do this little thing and poke a hole and show you how it works. Like they hadn't thought about that before they got on the ship. Anyway. But Kip Thorne had an interesting idea about how you could use a wormhole 
to actually travel back into the past. And the analogy that he used was, he said, imagine you're sitting in your living room and your wife goes out into a rocket ship in your front yard, a rocket ship that can travel at near the speed of light. And you have a wormhole that connects your living room to the rocket ship. You know, just imagine like a portal from the, the video game. You could see right through this, this wormhole to your wife. You could actually hold hands with her and she could take off and start traveling at near the speed of light. So she is traveling in a different time dimension than you are, basically. You could cross through that wormhole to get to her rocket ship and wind up being many decades and centuries into the future. And then you could cross back through that wormhole right back into the time that you started from. That is traveling backwards through time. And if none of this makes any sense, just go watch Rick and Morty. Unfortunately, wormholes, as we conceive of them right now, are completely theoretical. Uh, it's believed that for something like that to stay open, it re would require massive amounts of energy, but it actually requires what's called negative energy. And I believe negative energy has been created in labs, but only just tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of it, not enough to be useful for anything. Now, there was an interesting experiment that I found where scientists were able to basically reverse entropy, which is the flow of time, in a sense, in quantum states. Reversing entropy is basically the same as reversing time. It basically goes to the second law of thermodynamics, which states that entropy increases over time. And heat transfer is a good example of this. For example, heat scatters in the presence of lower temperatures. It doesn't concentrate. That scattering is entropy. If it were to concentrate, that would be reversing entropy. So what they did in this experiment was they manipulated formaldehyde molecules, and that's a combination of hydrogen, carbon, and chlorine. And they basically manipulated it so that the temperature of the hydrogen nucleus was warmer than the carbon nucleus. Now, in quantum terms, the temperature actually refers to the probability that the nucleus is in a particular energy state. Now in the experiment they talked about how they correlated atoms and I'm gonna be honest I'm not sure if that's the same as entanglement or not. If you know please respond in the comments. But they correlated these these atoms and what they found out was that when they were uncorrelated the heat transfer uh, went just the way it was supposed to. It went from the hydrogen atom to the carbon atom like one would expect. But when they correlated these atoms the hot nucleus got hotter and the cold nucleus got colder. So that heat concentrated which is basically reversing entropy. To reverse entropy is kind of like reversing the arrow of time. Now this doesn't mean that time actually flowed backwards in that molecule, but it does mean that it was a reversal of entropy from the way we would expect it in the normal world. Now another big problem with time travel, and you've seen this a million times in different science fiction films, is the problem of causation. Our understanding of the arrow of time really relies on one thing preceding another, causing another, causing another. That's what causation means. But if you travel backwards in time and you affect something in the past and change it, does that change causation? That breaks causation. And there's all kinds of philosophical questions out there about can that even be done? And is there some kind of way that it would you know, correct itself? Like we, we don't know these things. Ultimately, I think why we are so gravitated toward the idea of time travel is because we do want to be able to go back and change things in the past make things right, or experience good things all over again. But the fact that we can't do that kind of makes our own time right now more precious. It makes our life more precious. You know, we only get one chance at right now, and we can be successful, we can fail, we can be happy, we can be sad, but whatever we are, this is the only chance we get to have it. We're never gonna get that moment back. All we can do is just move forward, try to learn from the past, and be better as we continue down that river of time. For example, I did the live stream on the Falcon Heavy last week and at one point I looked at the little ticker and there were like 9,000 people watching. And I managed to do it. I didn't run off, I didn't drop my pants, and I didn't go crawl and cry in the fetal position. So, I guess that's a little redeeming. So I want to thank Mads for this question. Mads, by the way, is an awesome supporter on Patreon. He is supporting at the solar system level, and that's one of the things that you get to do at the solar system level. You get to have a question answered. If you'd like to get a question answered or would like to experience any of the other uh, perks that we have available, you can go join the over 300 people, which I still can't believe that's a real number, that are supporting this channel over at patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. Also, this shirt and many other shirts are available in the store at answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Really cool shirt, supports the channel, supports a designer in Prague named Michael, who's a great guy, so go check those out. Please like and share if you like this, and share in the comments. Are there things that you experienced once that you wish you could go back in time and recreate? Are there some other theories about time travel that I didn't talk about here? 
hit me up. And as always, if this is your first time here, I invite you to check out some of my other videos on similar topics. I come back with videos just like this every Monday, and now I have random Thursdays, which is kind of what this is, but it's also a Patreon question. So I'll leave you with that. You guys go out and have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.